It might sound intimidating to set up acoustic panels in your home studio, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. When I first built my studio, figuring out how to set up acoustic treatment was a bit of a head scratcher. I wasn't really sure where to start, what to do, but the good news is that it doesn't take too much to start and with just a few materials, you can transform your home studio. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the materials you need, how and where to hang them, and my personal experience with getting acoustic panels. First, you're gonna need an acoustic panel. You can either purchase an acoustic panel that's professionally made or go the DIY method and make your own. Both are honestly great options. I suggest looking around on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace because there are some really good deals out there for acoustic panels. If you wanna make your own, there's plenty of great YouTube videos on how to make your own panels and the savings can really add up in the long run. Next, you'll need screw eye hooks, two for one panel. One's gonna go on the left side, one's gonna go on the right side. You'll also need some picture wire. I like this brand and I got this pack that's nine feet and it shows the rating for how much weight it can hold. This one in particular can hold up to 50 pounds and when buying picture wire, make sure you know how much your panel weighs before you buy it. I weighed my panels and they're 14 pounds and I played it extra safe and got picture wire that had a rating of 50 pounds. Next, you'll need a picture hanger. Picture hangers also have a weight rating and the one that I got was rated for 30 pounds. You'll need something to hammer in the nail. To be honest, I don't even have a hammer at my house so I literally just use the back of my screwdriver. Other tools we'll need are a wire cutter, a measuring tape, and if you have it as a bonus, a leveler tool. You'll want to measure about a foot from the top of the panel and install one screw eye hook on the left side and one on the right side. It's going to be important to make sure that they are both one foot from the top. Then get the hanging wire and loop it through the eye hook and wrap several times on each side. The next step is important. You'll want to measure the apex of your wire, which is the highest point on which your wire will hang. If your apex is above the top of your panel, you're going to see the wire sticking out when you hang it. So you want the apex to be lower than the top of the panel so that the wire will be hidden. I usually try to aim between three to five inches below the top of the frame. Once you finish tying your wire together, install the picture hanger into the wall and be sure to watch how the nail is angled into the wall. Then it's finally time to place your acoustic panel on the wire hanger and if you have a leveler you can double check that it's straight and you're all set. Now let's talk about where to put your acoustic panels. This is my front wall. This is where I'm facing when I'm mixing and it's the closest wall to where my speakers are. Since I'm so close to the front wall, you know, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense to have acoustic treatment in the front because that's the wall that you're actually sitting closest to. So when your speakers are playing, sound doesn't bounce off of that front wall and hit you back from where you're sitting in the mix position. Just a spoiler alert, every wall matters, and so let's take a look at the back wall. This is my back wall, and this is where my speakers are both pointed at. I highly suggest getting sound absorption for your back wall and trying to do as much of that as possible, because the last thing you want is for your speakers to point frequency and energy at this wall and have all of that bounce all over your room. I've looked at some professional builds of mastering studios from the ground up. And one thing I noticed is that when they're developing the back wall, they have a tremendous amount of bass trapping and sound absorption on those back walls. And for me, I feel like if you're in a home studio, it's going to be unlikely that you'll have too much bass trapping. I feel like home studios lean on the side of not having enough. For my back wall, I have these two red soffit bass traps that are about 17 inches thick. And I put those in the corner of the back wall just for low end absorption. And then I have these six black panels that are 5.25 inches thick, and they help cover a wide range of bass, mid and low frequencies. Next, let's talk about the side walls. So this is my left side wall. And so that speaker that you're looking at is my left speaker. And this is kind of interesting because you have a window right in the very middle and you kind of have to keep that into consideration whenever you're 
putting up treatment when there's windows, doors, closets, or that kind of thing. My room isn't a perfect rectangle, and so I actually only have three spots where I could put base straps. And these two spots um, on the left wall were the best places where I could put base straps, which is why they're there. One thing to consider for your left and your right wall are the first reflection points. What happens is that on your left wall, you have your left monitor, and your monitor is bouncing sound off of your left wall and into your ear, and the same thing for the right monitor and the right wall. That's why I have this black monster bass trap here that I can kind of move around my left wall whenever I want. That's specifically to make sure that the sound from my left monitor isn't just being reflective off of the left wall and into my ear. The reason first reflections are problematic too is because in addition to the sound of the you know the, the music that you're listening to bouncing off the left wall and into your ear, your, your ears are also hearing the sound directly from the speakers to your ear. So you're basically hearing two slightly off time versions of something of a sound, but your brain perceives it as one thing and that's no good when it comes to mixing. Next is the right wall in my room. You can see my right monitor right there. And I have a really hard time with this wall specifically in my room. You have a closet right in the middle. You have this door with this kind of recessed cavity. And when you're in a home studio, you're gonna probably have rooms that are like this where it's kind of abnormal and you just have to make you know, the best of the situation. The reason I don't have a lot of treatment on my left and right wall right now is because they're kind of irregular shapes and my goal is to make custom acoustic panels that fit those sizes. My room's not perfect and so I know that I definitely need more treatment on the left and the right side. And for right now, I have this blue panel on the right wall that's that I kind of move around so that it can absorb the early reflections from the right monitor to my ear. And lastly is my ceiling. So right now I only have two acoustic panels these are the 244 GIK panels that are 5.25 inches thick. And I have these mounted right above where I'm sitting in the mix position. Mounting acoustic treatment on your ceiling is probably the most intimidating thing to do. I know that for me, I hesitated for a long time before doing it because I wasn't really sure how to do it, if it was gonna fall on my head or whatever. And so I kind of did this last, but it's actually not that hard. GIK Acoustics sells these mounting brackets and they basically attach to their panels and you screw it in, it's really easy. And it comes with some hardware that you attach to your panel and you can basically mount them into your ceiling. And it's actually not that bad. They make it pretty easy and I had no problems with it. What I like about these mounting brackets are that you don't need to find a stud in your ceiling. They come with toggle bolts so that they can hang from drywall. If you have low ceilings in your home studio, it's actually really important to make sure you have acoustic treatment on your ceiling. My ceilings are pretty short, and so what I hear in my studio is a lot of flutter echo. Sound is bouncing off of the floor to the ceiling, and it creates this weird flutter echo in my room. And so even for me, I know that I would like more ceiling treatment than what I have right now. Two is sort of the bare minimum, but I expect to have a lot more. If you're looking to buy panels and you're not sure which brand to check out, I personally recommend GIK Acoustics. I'm not sponsored by them, I just really like their panels and like to support their business. All my panels are from them and I have 16 244 panels and four soffit base traps. They come in a bunch of different sizes and colors. You have cloud brackets that could be easily added to them. I like how they have the eye hook so that you can you know, add wire and just hang them up pretty easily. They're just really flexible and I also like the materials that they use. They use this Kanaf Ecos insulation and it's, it's pretty environmentally friendly and it doesn't cause any like itchiness. I used to have panels from a different acoustic panel company and they wrapped their acoustic panels in this burlap and some of the insulation that they use was pretty harsh and so because the fabric was an open weave type situation, it actually made me itch a little bit more. And so these are really well covered and I don't have any itchiness or any reaction to these as well. 
Do acoustic panels work? 100%. When I first got these, I was kind of unsure. Like, are these actually gonna work? Am I wasting my money? But now that I have these, I have a lot of these, um, 100%, without a doubt, these completely transformed my studio. I definitely underestimated how much it would actually impact my studio, and I wish someone had told me sooner. The biggest difference that I noticed from acoustic treatment is how my speakers were actually performing. When you have speakers and you don't have the right acoustic treatment, you're not really hearing the full potential of how your speakers are actually performing. But I remember when I got the you know, this treatment, there was this kind of aha moment of, you know, I heard my, I heard the speakers without treatment and then with treatment. And it just, I kind of had this moment of like, are these the same speakers that I have? Like these sound completely different. You know, it, you know, it really kind of boiled down to like bass control. Like there was a lot more taming of like low end frequencies and then imaging from like left to right was very clear and a lot better. You can really hear how things were panned in the mix. And then you also have this other kind of component of like the front to the back of the sound stage. So you can kind of hear the depth of a song of like what's more up front, what's more in the back. And it really impacted like how I was hearing things. And when your speakers are performing well, at least for the ATCs that I have, you feel like you're I would explain it like you're sitting in the music. Like you can kind of close your eyes and you, you're just hearing everything right in front of you. And it's as if you're like kind of teleported into the music. I know that sounds a little strange, but because you're not having to fight, you know, the, the elements of your room and reflections and stuff, you're really hearing the music, like how it's supposed to sound and like really hearing the true performance. And so for me, I was really shocked at like how incredible, how much better it made my speakers sound. Something that really surprised me about acoustic panels that I didn't really think about is actually how much space they take up. So I have panels that are like 5.25 inches thick and they're in the front of my room and the back of my room. That's basically like 10 inches of space that I won't have access to. And then, you know, these uh, soffit bass traps, they're like around 17 by 17 inches thick. And so one thing that I didn't account for is like the more that you add, you really have to dial in like how your studio space is set up so that you're optimizing as much space because you're going to lose space. And you know, I have these against the wall, but still like the more you cover, the less space you're going to have in your studio. And I didn't really think about how it was going to impact space. And so that's one thing that surprised me the most. What I wish I realized about acoustics a lot sooner is that every piece of gear, whether it's a microphone, um, a new synth, an equalizer, a compressor, everything interacts to the acoustics of your room. And I wish I really knew the extent of how important that was. And so now with acoustic treatment, you start to hear compression differently. You hear EQ, you, you really hear EQ, you hear saturation, distortion, and you're hearing all these things better and when you're hearing these things better, you know, let's say you have a compressor and you're using that, you're going to really hear how your compressor is working or maybe not working, or maybe it's not that big of a difference and a plugin will do. Like the more accurate your, your listening environment is going to be, you're going to really hear things and see if, oh, do I need this piece of hardware gear? Is the software version better? Is the synth good or is it not good? Everything that you're hearing is interacting with the acoustics of your room, and that's what I wish I realized sooner. While acoustic treatment may not be the most fun thing to buy or even to talk about, I'm really excited to talk about this topic today because of how much it's impacted my own studio and how much I actually believe that it works. And so next time you're thinking about buying, you know, a shiny new synth, an electric guitar, an EQ or a compressor, I do highly recommend and suggest looking into buying acoustic treatment because this is actually more on the you know less expensive side and it makes a tremendous impact in your studio with how you're perceiving everything. And so while it's maybe not the most fun, it is kind of an inev inevitable thing when, when you have a music studio of branching out and getting acoustic treatment as you become more serious for music production or recording. 
And so while it's not fun, it's absolutely essential and has transformed the way that I work in my own studio. Thank you so much for watching my channel. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe and see you again soon.